You can't plan for things like this. Suddenly I get this phone call and it was a police officer. What happened? Mike had no clue how bad it was and I was just telling him it's a lot worse than you think. I'm fairly saying I blacked out for a few seconds. I remember him telling me he just looked down at his leg and I could just see like the bones inside his leg. When I was sitting there, I was just hoping not to die. You could tell he was losing a lot of blood. They tourniqueted his leg. It's bad. And then they said, we've got to life light him. I did put my trust in God that everything would be good. I didn't know that I could die that day. I didn't know that it would change my life forever. Hi, my name is Dallin. If I had to describe myself, I would say I'm very energetic and outgoing. People say the glass is half empty or half full. I would say it's either half full or like all the way full, half with water, half with air. I remember when he was little and, and he was just such a fireball everywhere, just all over. <laughs> Here's the kid that in fifth grade uses his Christmas money to buy a weighted vest so he could run to school and back. Me and Dallin have been friends forever and we've done everything together and he's always just been super positive about everything. I had just finished my first week of seventh grade and I was like, hey, I'll go hang out with my friends. So went over to my buddy's house. He rode his bike over to our house and asked if I wanted to go do something, like go to the river or something. We would do this often, so hopped on our bikes, went down to our nearby river, and we were riding, and there's these dirt trails that we're familiar with. We were riding along, and it was getting pretty hot, so we like got to a spot where we thought it looked deep in there so we could get in and maybe swim around a little bit. So we were like, oh, let's jump in the river, and we started climbing down this embankment. We came across a little like spot, like a little ledge, and above us there was just these rocks. And it was kind of difficult to get down, so we were like navigating our way across. And there was this rock, a bush, and another rock, and we were just stepping over the bush. So we set our hands up on this ledge above us. And we put our hands up to steady ourselves. Just the weight of our hands made this whole ledge fall on top of us. It was about a three foot ball rolled down and hit my friend Andrew and knocked him back. It was so quick, within seconds, that it happened. And they just came loose and crashed down on us. And the larger one came down on me and it scraped my leg all the way down and then crushed my foot. And I remember us both just screaming and crying after that. And we both had the adrenaline to climb up that hill. I'm not even sure how, there were definitely some miracles there and we started walking, and we walked about 40 yards, and then I realized I couldn't go any farther, so I sat down and I told my friend, you go on, you go, I can't, I was too badly injured. I was just praying as I was running, just praying out loud that everything would be okay and he'd be okay. I was praying just to stay alive and for help. And I was running past like people's stuff and people's bags on there, and there was no people, I couldn't find anyone. He told me the adrenaline just kept him going, and the thought of me being seriously injured helped him to just keep running. He ran about a mile. I finally found Ed on the trail. He was riding his bike. He rides his bike every day, and he'll go down to this river trail, and he always turns right and goes all the way down the trail and then all the way back up to his house. But he decided, I'm, I'm gonna turn left. Like, I just feel like I need to turn left. And the first person he saw while he was riding was my buddy Andrew. So Andrew told me Dallin's name. He gave me the direction of where I needed to go. I'm yelling out Dallin the entire time. Finally, I, he I hear a, I'm here. I came over a ridge and I saw him. And as I went over the ridge, he was sitting up and he laid down as soon as he saw me coming over the ridge. And as soon as I got to him, I realized, wow, this is pretty serious. His cut was from the mid-thigh all the way down to his ankle. His ankle was crushed. So the very first thing that I did was I noticed that his tourniquet 
it was untied. I tied it up, put it in a very tight knot. Of course, I'm making sure that he's okay. I'm making sure that he's conscious and he's not in shock and he's, he's doing okay. He carries around pictures of Christ and he handed me one of those. That helped just calm, not necessarily my body, but my mind to know that first of all, I was gonna get through this. Second, that there was someone who had already been through this for me and that he suffered as I suffered and that he could relate and he would help me through it and understand what I was going through. Suddenly I get this phone call. It was a police officer. He said, I'm down at the river trail, I'm with your son. And the first thought in my mind was, what did he do? My worst fear in that moment was that I would just, I would lose Alan. And as I came around the corner to the parking lot where there was a paramedic, there were fire department, there were police cars. They said that they had given him morphine and that they had tourniqueted his leg. And I, at that moment, probably being the wimp that I am, decided that I would not look, I wouldn't view his leg or his foot because I wanted to be strong for him. Dallas is getting life lighted to primary children's. He has crushed his foot. It's pretty bad. He's got a tourniquet on his left leg. The worry is the viability of the foot. As we pulled up to the hospital and into the emergency room, we were ushered back to be with him. And at that point, I focused more on Dallin directly. It's like, kind of just went by his side. They immediately took me in for my first surgery. They tried to make the bleeding stop. I came out of that surgery. I'm not exactly sure how many hours it was, but the doctor said I had thousands and thousands of stitches. <laughs> I remember telling my dad, saying, you know, I heard him say, they don't think they can save the foot. And my dad was so funny. He said, oh, if anybody could hop around on a contraption, it would be Dallin, <laughs> you know? Later that night, Dallin, it was late at night, in the middle of the night, he woke up and I was by his side, not really sleeping much at all. And he goes, hey dad, do you think this will mess up my running? Before my accident, I was the fastest kid in my school. We would run the mile and I would get first almost every time. He had always had a dream of just running on the track team. And even though we were praying for miracles, the biggest miracle I think I was praying for was that something could happen mentally and inside of him where he could recognize the Lord's hand in his life and, and not fall away from that and not be bitter about that because people have physical trials, but usually physical trials don't affect people until it gets to them mentally, until it gets to them spiritually and it affects them that way. We went back to the doctor's office and he said, I'm so sorry, but it looks like we, we need to amputate the foot. I remember Mike saying, can you, can you give us a minute? You know, and the team said, sure, and they stepped out, and the three of us just kind of huddled and had a good cry. I remember my amputation surgery. I didn't know what it was going to feel like. I didn't know what I was going to think, and I remember opening my eyes, sitting up, and looking down at my foot. I said to my dad, well, that's smaller than I thought. It's been inspiring to watch him. He had kind of come to grips that this was gonna have to be. And I have found that whenever we turn to God, that, that it gets, it's better than it would be without God. And that's what Dallin did. He turned to the Lord. There is peace and trusting in him. That following spring when the track season came, I signed up and I would run the 800 meter every race I could. No matter if it hurt, I would finish. And even I got lapped a couple of times because I was slow, but I, I would go and I would finish just because I wanted to show that I could do this even if there was a challenge, an obstacle in my way. And we just bawled the entire time to watch our boy do something that he loved. Um, and, uh, and to watch his commitment. It was such a joyful, happy day that he could cross the finish line. And sometimes I think that's what hardship gives us, is a different perspective on what's important. Helps us find joy in really, really simple little things. Helps us find gratitude. 
in places we wouldn't have thought to look before. I love God, I love Jesus. I know that they have a plan for me and that they will help me through it. So they send other people to us to help, whether it's a friend, family member, or even some stranger. I don't even have words for how grateful I am for Jesus Christ. I know he atoned for our sins and that he went through all that we will ever go through for us so that we could return to him and to Heavenly Father. The day that he ran his race and came in dead last, I've never been so proud. And at that moment, that spot was the championship spot in my eyes. He keeps pushing, he keeps trying, and lifts others along the way. Even at our darkest moments, when we feel alone, everybody has issues, everybody has trials. God knows that we can get through them and that they will make us a better whole. We can always turn towards God.